If you're looking for an objective way to measure quad strength and determine somebody's quad index, which you should be doing all the time, but you don't want to spend tens of thousands of dollars on a biodex uh, or even a thousand dollars on a handheld dynamometer, then I have a, a cheap, effective solution for you. Okay, it costs about 60 to 70 dollars, depending on what supplies you have on hand to set up, and it gives you very comparable numbers to testing on the biodex. Okay, I have access to a biodex, so I actually test myself both ways on each, and I have found that the numbers are very comparable. Yeah, I'll go over those numbers, exact numbers, in a little bit. Um, I used to work in a clinic that had a biodex for about 11, 12 years or so, and then I recently moved to a clinic that didn't have one, and I realized how much I miss having that objective data on quad strength. Um, and I've been trying to find a way to determine that pretty cheaply, and I came across this method. I can't remember exactly where it was. I'm reading stuff all the time, um, so I'm sorry whoever started this but I just want to go over the method because I think it really is that effective and as therapists as a whole, we, we need to be testing quad strength more, especially after knee surgeries, um, even more so after ACL surgeries. Okay, so the setup you need to buy a hanging weight scale or a crane scale, okay, you can get them on Amazon. I put the link for the one I, uh, I use, which is this one in the description. This one's about $50, okay? And there's another version, or, or there's a bunch of versions. Everything has a bunch of versions on Amazon. This one's about $35, okay? Don't buy the cheaper one, because this one has a really good feature where it automatically holds, it records the peak force that's put through here, okay? So when somebody kicks out, it'll keep the highest number on the screen, okay? The cheaper model doesn't do that, okay, and I made the mistake and bought this one first. Um, thanks, Brad, for telling me about the difference. This one doesn't keep that peak hold feature, so I had to video the screen, and then when they're done, I have to go through the video real slowly and try and find the peak number, and then write that number down. <clears throat> so spend the, the 15 extra dollars, get the one that has the peak hold feature. It's really that much easier. Okay, it comes with, um, this removable clip there and this one's screwed in up top you can unscrew this one and then you can feed it through whatever system you use to anchor it down um, I put people on a leg extension machine and I anchor it down to one of the supports on the bottom and I use a chain <clears throat> okay. um, I like the chain because you can adjust the length of where it is for, for different limb lengths um, Everybody's gonna be angled a little differently and to be able to adjust it is nice. Now, another thing I screwed up when I first did it, when you measure, if you're using the, the clip they give you, you could also use a carabiner if you want. Um, doesn't make a big difference. I've used both. <clears throat> Don't measure the length of the, uh, the width of the chain link just at the end on the last link, okay? Measure it even in the middle because the, one of the carabiner I bought fits in the last link, okay, but doesn't fit in the ones in the middle. So I can't adjust it as well. Okay. The length of chain you need, uh, about three or four feet. Okay. That's about it, because you wrap it around the brace a couple times, um, and then you can adjust the length for somebody's limb. Okay. And you also need on the other end, some way to secure it around a person's lower leg, around their ankle. This is just an attachment for a cable column. Um, they make tons of these on Amazon. We had one around the clinic, so I just used that one. <clears throat> and that would sit right on the end of, of the machine here like this. Okay. Now, looking at the setup all put together, I do it on a leg extension machine, like I said. I have their knee at 60 degrees which is the standard angle for measuring quad strength when you do it on the biodex. And so you have the ankle strap around the ankle, then the, the hook, the carabiner you could use if you want, the hanging weight scale, attach the chain. Again, you can adjust, by having a chain, you can adjust the, the angle where it is a lot easier. Okay. Now an important thing about 
the setup is you want to make sure that their hips are secured down. Okay, so I just used a mobilization belt. You could probably use, and you know, some people have like a seat belt type uh, mobility belt laying around. I would use that so it clasps in really good. But you definitely want to anchor the hips down so they don't fly up out of the seat uh, when they kick out. Okay, you want to get a really isolated measurement of quad strength. Okay, and when they do it, hands across their chest. Um, they can't hold on to the side. And now let's look at the numbers that I got for myself when I tested uh, my, my quads on the Biodex. So my quad index was 111%. Apparently my left leg is that much stronger than my right leg. Uh, and yes, if I was looking at it the other way, right to left, I guess I would be 89% and not be able to play a lot of sports according to some criteria. And now looking at the hanging weight scale setup, when I tested my quads, I got a 114.2%. So not exactly the same. I wasn't expecting it to be exactly the same, but pretty darn close. And I'll take those numbers for 50 bucks any day of the week. Okay. So now that you've seen that the numbers are pretty close, it's cheap to set up. Okay. And it's really easy to get the materials. You get them on Amazon uh, or at your local hardware store. There's no reason, no excuses why you can't be testing somebody's quad strength and determining their quad index. Okay? It really is that important, especially after ACL surgery when you're talking about returning to sport. Okay? So give it a shot, try it out on your patients, and let me know how it goes.